Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner. In this video, I'll be following up on the Q&A announcement video with my answers to your questions. Thanks once again to everyone who clicked on the video and read the com posted in the comment section as well as, yeah, that. So with that being said, this will be the last one I do before the holidays. Yeah, uh, if I do one of these again, it'll probably be just before Christmas or right after New Year's. And there's not a whole else I can really say about that. So with that being said, let's crack into this, shall we? So the first two questions I'm going to actually be taking from the one of my tournament report videos. And that's because I just didn't have the time to answer them. So... Uh, they are first up from Golden Warrior of Light. So, our gold's terrible. I'll still play them because I love them. Yeah, Gold Paladin is pretty bad. Like, they're down there with Aqua Force and Nova Grappler as far as just bad XL clans. The problem with golds is that they are way too resource intensive, can't hit numbers, and they rely on your on high rolling super hard to actually do stuff like their superior ride with Ezel in theory is nice but once again your opponent hits one defensive trigger and your turn gets shut down because standard is balanced right i swear to god if they had made the new triggers plus 5000 power but still retain their new shield values i think this format would be considerably less cancer than it currently is and axel as a whole wouldn't be such a joke because your opponent like it is literally impossible to rush people unless you feel like you're that lucky because once again you make a poke your opponent f puts a hits a defensive draw that's it your other rear guard lanes can't hit unless you flip a trigger yourself but not everyone's that lucky but for the people who are that lucky and are able to roll multi-triggers on their rush turns congratulations you're far better at this game than i am and then Juane Diego de Scalar also asks, may I know your personal ranking for the clans as of now? Given that this was asked on a tournament results video, I'm going to just assume he meant what's going on in the OCG as, as the TCG is, um, it, things are still settling down. Although it does seem to be that we are mirroring Japan in that Oracle Think Tank, Shadow Paladin and Murakumo are the three best decks in the game. And North America also loves Kagro and Royal Paladin, so those two decks are also appearing. Murakumo has his good matchup against Oracle Think Tank, but Shadow Paladin eats it alive. Oracle Think Tank has a tough matchup against Murakumo, although, as I've said before, if a good Oracle Think Tank player goes up against a bad Murakumo player because they think, oh, I'm just going to play Murakumo and immediately win, but the OTT player is prepared for the matchup, they have a reasonable chance of winning, and then OTT body shadows. But that's nothing new there. As far as Japan goes, I do believe that the ranking goes Oracle Think Tank, Neo Nectar, or Shadow Paladin. It's one of those two. Then Murakumo, Angel Feather, or and then yeah, Neo Nectar, Shadow Paladin. Like the the ranking, I do not can't really like say for certain because all we really have to go on for post Ultra Rare collection is strictly team tournaments which is why I keep asking for single tournaments so we can actually see if Angel Feather Neo Nectar is all that. Plus, though, there's the whole issue that Neo Nectar is good chiefly because of Sunlight Garden Guy, and that success probably will not translate well over here in North America as people are going to pick up Neos and thinking, awesome, this deck's going to do all the shit it does in Japan, but we can't actually make as many tokens as Japan does, and that's a problem. So, um, yeah, Oracle Think Tank... Yeah, Oracle Think Tank, Neo Nectar, Murakumo, Shadow Paladin, Angel Feather, or Angel Feather, Shadow Paladin. That sounds about right. And yeah, that's about all I can really say on that. Dragon Nexus asks Considering that the clans have been getting new mechanics like Divinity Gauge for Genesis or tokens for Neo Nectar, do you think we might get a new mechanic style for Narakami? And what kind of new mechanic would you like to see for them? The thing about this is that Bushiroad's been really hit or miss when it comes to these things. Tokens, I feel like was more of a fluke than anything else, but then again, Bushiroad also seems to know how to design for Force Clans, whereas with Axel and Protect, it's a really different story. Like, I feel like designing for those two for those two gifts is outside of their comfort zone, and that's why Axel Clans and Protect Clans have been really hit or miss. Like, Oracle Think Tank aside, you can honestly make the argument that Protect Clans have been really 
subpar. Like, Grand Blue seemed good initially, but as time goes on, it's not good. Darker Regulars are not good. Angel Feather, now, that's a bit of a different story, but then again, this will be the, what is it, the fourth Protect Clan? No, the fifth, oh, right, I forgot Mega Golly. But, like, it just, it seems like they either do it really good or they do it really badly. And then Axel, look at what's happening so far with that. They've managed to succeed with Murakumo, but look at how many flops we've had until then. Nova Grappler, Tachi Kaze. Yes, Tachis were good for a little bit, but it was also very early into the game when that happened. Uh, Aqua Force, Clan is utter shit. Like, yeah. The only thing that's wor like it's worse than Gold Paladin, and they're also pretty bad. And the whole gauge thing for Genesis seems need seemed neat at first, but now that we've seen Himiko and how she doesn't do anything with gauges, I actually wonder why. Are they making two Genesis decks out of this set? An extremely small set? No, I, I think that's awful for that. But um any case, so I don't think Naros will get a new gimmick. They probably wouldn't know how to make the gimmick work to begin with. I'd rather with the, they stick with something that they're more familiar with, such as punch the board or bind the board. Bind the board would be a bit better because it would work with the G support so that Narukami could at least do something in premium. Otherwise, it'll be a case of good standard deck, shit premium deck, i.e. where Neo Nectar is. And uh, truth be told, some of our strides wouldn't be that bad in Axel Gauge, but... All then again, Narukami in premium format would probably be turbo to GB8 and hope to God it gets there. Or you just play sweep memes. Actually, sweep wouldn't be that bad for the format because you could you could probably stop the assassin loop if you've got a loaded sweep command and four soul, four soul, four counterblast. You could yeah you could kill off two assassins unless they call them all to the back row. But MP can still pick off one of them. But in any case. Uh, yeah, as much as I would like Nars to get some kind of spicy new gimmick, I think they I'd rather just see one of our current gimmicks expanded upon because it could work. Like if Nars get the ability to wipe out multiple cards per turn while also getting around Promise Daughter, then they might have a chance. Like a thing like Oracle Think Tank is a good measuring stick for how well a clan can do in standard format. As if your deck has a good matchup against Oracle Think Tank, then you've already got some promise. And if Naras are able to beat Oracle Think Tank and also like kill multiple cards in a turn, they might end up just being a better Murakumo deck for the format. Granted, Murakumo is good for that Zambaku locking, the ability to play an Axel deck, but also build advantage, which are also two things that Naras don't really do, but who knows? Like, Retire is really good in this format, and if we just more or less play like a not-shit Thunderstrike deck, then we might have a chance. Drive Check comes in with two questions, the first one being, with Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, what do you think of it in the second season? This season's been really good. I was afraid that after the Tower of Hanoi arc that the writing team would drop the ball and meander about like what, what happened with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Thieves after its Dark Sickness arc, which was kind of like... It was very... The Tower of Hanoi arc was very reminiscent of the Dark Sickness arc. So, I had concerns, but Reigns has been able to keep it steady right from the onset. Uh, I wasn't initially interested in the new plot that started with the season but with the introduction of more characters particularly soul burner and the ai uh, i'm heavily invested now and my god this show has gotten dark like i have not seen episode 76 yet but episode 75 made me go this is a kid's show right like if you know you anyone who's watched episode 75 particularly the very end of it knows what i'm talking about like holy shit that was darker than this week's goblin slayer episode which leads me into the next question he asks, which is, have I watched Goblin Slayer? Well, as I kind of alluded to, yes, I have. I checked it out after Giguk posted his video that parodied people's reactions to it, and then I saw Anetica reacts to the episode. So I know about that scene in question with episode one. And at first I'm like, huh, okay. Then I watched the next episode. Like, oh, okay, I get what this is. This is supposed to be like a sort of deconstruction uh, subversion of the D and D tabletop fantasy world setting. You would see thing, things like Dragon Quest or the Dragonlance novels or Forgotten Realms, which are all things I've read. I highly enjoy Dragons of the High Lord Skies and Dragons of Summer Flame. 
And Drizzter Erden is one of the coolest characters I've also read in the novel. But uh, he's in Forgotten Realms, by the way. Whereas Dragonlance has Tannis, Half Alvin, and. Oh. Uh, yeah, Tannis, uh, Katara, Lor. Oh, yeah, Lorana. That was her name. Uh, Tannis's uh, girlfriend slash wife. In any case, though, yeah. I like what I've seen so far. I like how it's not afraid to just say, yeah, this is the grim reality of what can happen when you go adventuring in the dungeon and you're ill equipped. The Goblin Slayer character himself. Uh, he is hilariously stoic, and uh, who else is like a character I like in that show? I don't really care for Cowgirl. Priestess will probably grow on me eventually. High Elven Archer is annoying, and I have no opinion on the Dwarf. Uh, the Lizard Man, I guess, would be interesting, because I was expecting like a big gruff guy, but here's this... Yeah, I was expecting a big gruff guy, but yet he's f freaking out over the fact of how good cheese is. Yeah, so Goblin Slayer and I guess the Lizard Guy are my, my two favorite characters with Priestess falling behind. Mm hmm. So I hope that answered your questions. Bakachan Desu comes in with three questions. The first one being, what would you think, what do you think would be the most oppressive clan in the game if it got true good support or just basically if Bush Road said, fuck it, like what they, they did with Bermuda Triangle at the end? Probably Mega Colony, because if they continued what they did with the Zoo Booster, with the whole column locking, they probably would have just flat out said, yeah, no superior calls ever. Like, they probably would have printed Vanity's Emptiness on a body, or maybe even just made Skill Drain. Or have quick, or have a Vanguard be able to Soul Blast to choose one of your opponent's regards and it loses its ability during your the player that player's turn. Or, so, yeah, I could... I, yeah, if they just said fuck it with Mega Colony, I could see them being one of the most disgusting clans in the game. Like, Gregora was already pretty oppressive when it initially came out. It's just it took Power Creep to get her out. Uh, how would you handle the ban list for premium or a standard? So, for standard format, the problem really just is Oracle Think Tank. And my solution to that would be put Promised Daughter to one and put uh, Victorious Deer to one. Deer is their finisher, and the deck is able to draw enough cards to, to get to him consistently. So putting him down to one means that the deck can't kill you as fast. Putting Promised Daughter to one also makes it so that it's easier to manage Oracle Think Tank in the earlier grind games, because that thing being a near costless 15 attacker that can't be retired by effects means that Shadow Paladin, Kagru, and other retire clans will struggle to get that thing off the board. So if you put it at one, Kagru and Shadow Paladin have an easier time to play. And as far as the premium ban list goes, that is a can of worms I do not know if I really want to open. The obvious hits would be put Enigmatic Assassin to one, do something about the Tom-Water combination. Even though Tom-Water is not considered to be a good deck anymore, it's still a bit of a barrier of entry. And admittedly, something does need to be addressed regarding Gize because like how well your deck is able to perform in premium format right now stems to can you beat Gize? And, yeah, I think that's really it for now. We'll have to see what the answer of Truth Set does with Gear Chronicle and Genesis, as the combination of Himiko and original Angelic Wiseman can lead to some dumb shit going on. We're talking uh, an Angelic Wiseman with three crits applied to it off of Himiko on a four circle, so that's 50k minimum. You swing 53 or 54 three crits, and he restands because you're probably doing the Wiseman loop at that point. That's disgusting. And then, the last question is, what do you think of the new Mega Man game? Is it worth getting? Mega Man 11 is great. It is easily the best game to come out for the Classic Series in a while. And it's not as good as 9, but it's definitely up in like my top 5 Mega Man Classic games with Mega Man 9, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 2, and Mega Man 3. Yeah, I didn't really care for 5 and 6 as much. Although I also have a soft spot for 7. But yeah, it, yeah, it's in the top 5 classic Mega Man games. It's it's really good. And not playing it would be a huge disservice for any Mega Man fan. And our last question comes from Windraker Rules who asks, Did you cheat to reach level 4? Well, let's ask Leia herself. What do you say, Leia? Did you cheat to reach level 4? Leia says bye.
And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching. And yeah, we'll probably be doing one more of these in the late winter. And yeah, until next time, this is Blue Saturday 9, jacking out.